Hi. Uh, in this video, we are going to study another another context where quantile regression can be useful. Uh, that is, so this is section 7.1.1, uh, censored quantile regression. So we have learned a censored variable earlier in this course. So censored, censoring, let's think about censoring. Censoring is when the, the a variable is not perfectly observed. We only partially observe the variable. Typically, there are two examples we consider. The top coding. So when we, when we survey income or uh, wealth, usually there is a top code uh, to protect uh, privacy of super rich, the super rich. So for example, if your income is greater than say 10 million, like $100 million, uh, you, uh, your income encoded as just $100 million. It's because there are so few people earning more than $100 million. So if, if your true income is revealed, then everyone knows who you are. So for example, if you know, if Bill Gates, you can tell who is Bill Gates, uh, if your data, data set about income, you can tell uh, who is Jeff Bezos, who is Warren Buffett, in, in a data if they tell the, their true income or wealth. So to protect their privacy, uh, their income is top coded. But also when I read the data, I know, I know there is a top code. So even if it's encoded as $1 million, but you have to understand it as uh, like $100 million, but you have to understand it as $100 million or more. So it's well known. So uh, the income greater than $100 million uh, is censored. It is censored from the right, censored from above. Another example is uh, unemployment duration. So it is a very interesting research topic to study how long a person uh, on unemployed takes uh, time to find the next job, how long it takes to find the next job since unemployed. So this kind of data is an important issue in labor economics and the data that the data source is the uh, government unemployment benefits. So, so when I'm unemployed, if I'm unemployed, then I will apply for unemployment benefits and so that's the data. Then, then in the data, I am recorded. Oh, this guy was unemployed, was fired at this point. And when I find another job, then automatically I will be deregistered de from the unemployment benefits. So, and so it's uh, the administration data contain the information of my unemployment duration. But the problem is the maximum uh, duration of maximum period of unemployment benefits is 40 weeks. So if you remain unemployed, employed for more than 40 weeks, uh, it's, it's only recorded, only re recorded only as, as 40 weeks because you cannot observe more than 40 weeks. Maybe you could find another job in the 41st week or you may remain unemployed forever, like in your life. So you cannot tell. So it's again, uh, the unemployment duration is uh, censored, censored at 40 weeks. Example three, 
we did exactly the example we considered earlier, medical expenditure or working hours. So the authors, the textbook authors claim that these examples are not good example of censoring because it's not actually censored. The earlier two, two previous examples are, are perfect. They are perfect examples of censoring. We know how they are censored and actually it, it, they, the data are censored by a known mechanism. But in this, we just, we imagine a hypothetical censoring process. So they, the, the authors do not agree with the model that we imagine, but um, I don't know, it's, it, it depends. So let me just explain, assuming that, so let me just introduce the model. And if you don't like the model, then that's yours, uh, that's your decision. Let me explain as we did. So there is a latent variable, a variable y star, which is, um, which is the uh, willing needs to spend on um, <clears throat> medical services. So, I, as I explained earlier, uh, if you are sick, then you are willing to pay money for your uh, for medical services. Like you may buy medicines, or you may see a doctor. You may need to get some treatment. Uh, so then, then Y star will be positive. You're willing to pay the money. But if you are healthy enough, then Y star will be negative. Uh, I'm just healthy enough, man. So maybe I can get a cold if you give me. $20, then I can be sick a day, something like that. Then in that case, the willingness is negative, but uh, a negative um, Y star is, poss is, is, is possible, uh, cannot be realized. There is no market to uh, trade negative willingness. So they are censored at zero. Only, the only thing you can do is not doing anything. You cannot sell your health for money. Uh, so what you can do is just not going to the hospital is the most you can do. Thus, uh, so why the observed outcome, why is yi star, if yi star is positive, non-negative, is non-negative, and uh, is zero if y i star is negative. So the observed outcome, if you if your willingness to pay is positive, then you will act on that. Uh, but if not, if it's negative, then uh, you cannot do anything. So your observation is zero. Uh, same as working hours. If you are willing to work, like y star is willingness to work it can be negative. I will pay you, pay some money to you. So please give me uh, your, your hours, like you like work for me. So I'd like to hire you, but that is not observed in the data. So also similarly, negative uh, numbers are not available. So it's your, it's, it's totally my imagination. It's not, it does not exist. It's just one way to interpret the medical expenditure data and working hours data. So anyhow, in these examples, so to any or the common the the main feature of that is the main one of the important feature of such variables is that we know how many observations are are censored. So we know which observation is censored. For example, in this example, if you see $100 million, then you know, oh, it's censored. Uh, so it means 100 million or more. And in unemployment duration, you know 40 weeks is the censoring point. So if you observe 40 weeks, then you have to understand it as 40 or longer, 40 weeks or longer. And similarly, if you observe zero in this example, then uh, you have to understand it as zero or negative. So you know how many observations are censored. And now let's think about, let's think about 
income distribution. And um, simply suppose that you observe 100 uh, uh, individuals and, and their income, incomes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, da, 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 100. So there are two incomes. Your true income is uh, so you have you in or in the original data it has to be one two three four five uh, up to one hundred then uh, the average is fifty you can calculate and the median is is fifty and say ninety percentile is and the ninety percentile is ninety ninety nine percentile is ninety nine so it's easy to understand so. I simplified uh, the example. However, now uh, consider uh, censoring uh, at 90. So like top coded, it's top coded at 90. That means your observations are now one, two, three, four, five, up to 80, say, say 80, 88, 89, 90, and then 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So let's simply simplify this at 95. So then your observation would be 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, had to be 96, but it is censored at 95, 95, 97 becomes 95, 98 becomes 95, 99 becomes 95, 100 becomes 95. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, six 95s because five observations are censored. Even though you observe them, uh, you have to understand it as you know, also know that, you know that. Uh, the observations are censored. Let's calculate. Let's calculate now. If you calculate the average, it will be uh, 49, I guess. Uh, could be wrong. <laughs> so let's double check. Uh, anyhow, the average is, it, it is wrong. It is not 50. That is the problem. Uh, the average is miscalculated if you use this, but the quantiles uh, are not affected by the censoring. I, I say, say more, more precisely, quantiles up to 95% are not affected by the censoring because so there is no problem in calculating. Nine, anyhow, the order does not change. Even if they, these, the exact numbers are censored, but you still, you know, 95, these observations are greater than the others. So that's the only, that's the only information you need to calculate the quantile or uh, like percentiles. So for example, for example, the median is still 50. So if you list if you list 100 numbers like as as if they are still 95, the order does not change. So the the 50th observation is still 50, and still the 90 percentile is 90. Again, uh, if you if you line them up from the smallest to the largest, the 90 percentile is still 90 because as I said, the order does not change. So. So, thus, the mean regression can be misleading uh, because mean is not, the average is not calculated, uh, but the quantile regression is valid up to the censoring point, on, up to the uncensoring, uncensored, so let's put it this way, on uncensored, 
uh, proportion. So if 95% if are not censored, then uh, you, can, you can say that the quantile regression works up to 95 percentile. So this is the main idea. Let me generalize this. Uh, uh, invariance to monotone transformation. For example, um, so suppose that GF is a weekly increasing function. And also then we are interested in, we have, uh, we have information about a random variable x, but we are interested in a new random variable, another random variable y, which is defined as f of x. So for example, you can imagine, you can imagine y is log of x, or you can imagine, uh, or can imagine y is say ax plus b. It doesn't matter. Uh, you may think dif many different functional forms here. Then, then remember, um, the expectation does not preserve the monotone transformation f which means expectation of fx is different from uh, f of expectation x. So in those examples, for example, so which means a log of expected value of x is different from expectation of log of x. Right. Uh, by the way, but but this this transformation is okay because it is linear. Uh, expectation preserves linear transformation. So let me erase it. It's confusing. So does not preserve uh, nonlinear. Okay, let's put put it as preserve nonlinear monotone transformation f. But quantile regression quantiles do preserve. Uh, monotone uh, transformation. Any any monotone linear or nonlinear monotone transformation, which means quantile of y quantile of f f x equals to f of quantile x. So in our example, you can think it as log of quantile tau x equals to quantile tau of log x. Then it means quantile tau of y in our example. So if you are interested in tau quantile of y, and if you know the relationship between x and y, and if you have information about, say, data about x, then what you can do here is from the data about x, you can calculate, see, from the data on x, calculate quantile, it's easy. Um, and then take the transformation uh, f of q tau x, you, in, in, in this example, f is log, and then it is which equals to, equals to, Q tau of y. So if you are interested in quantile about y, then you can use quantile of x and then take transformation. It did not work for expectation, but it does work for quantiles. This is another nice uh, and interesting property, especially in our example. The censoring example can be rewritten as so remember the observed y was defined as y i star n zero depending on the sign 
and if to zero. So you can rewrite this as in one line. This. So maximum of y i star and zero. It's simple. It's simple function. So maximum function chooses. So compares y i star and zero and takes the larger value. So if y i star is positive, of course positive number is greater than zero. So it returns the positive number. But if it was negative, then obviously zero is the larger. So uh, the maximum function returns zero. So exactly that's what we have. And then like note that uh, the, the, the maximum function is weakly increasing in y i star. It never decreases. As y i star increases, the maximum function increases or constant. If uh, y i star is negative, then it may be constant. It does not change at zero. But if it's positive, then it increases as y i star increases. So we can uh, do use the quantile regression to study y i star. That means that is we observe y i and um, we know that y i star satisfies can be written as so you can invert invert that uh, like let me let's put it this way y i is f of y i star with a weekly increasing function f then if you are curious about are curious about quantile of y star, quantile tau of y i star. So f y i star can be equals to y quantile of y i. So if you, you can calculate this guy from quantile regression, quantile regression can estimate the quantile tau quantile of y and then it, we have a clear relationship between them. So it equals to and further equals to f of quantile tau of y i star. So using this relationship, y you can study about this based on this guy. And f is a known function, maximum function. So it is easy to handle. Uh, it's not a big problem. So you have this property. This is a nice property. And and as you know, many in many examples, we use log of wage. And in a similar sense, you can transform the log of wage into wage, quantiles of log wage into quantiles of just wage. Uh, so in this is another nice feature of quantile regressions. Um, Okay, thank you for watching this video. This was about uh, section 7.1.1. There are more equations, but I did not uh, explain the equations. The main idea is pretty much the same. So, and um, uh, yeah. Okay, see you in the next video. Thank you for watching this.